diagnosing cardiac arrhythmia on ecg in 10 seconds might seem an impossible task but let's simplify this topic with the help of flow charts uh, these flow charts will diagnose cardiac arrhythmia in most of the cases but there can be some exceptions there are two types of cardiac arrhythmia one is bradyarrhythmia where the heart rate is less than 60 and to diagnose heart rate of less than 60, RR interval should be more than 25 mm or more than 5 big square width. While the other arrhythmia is uh, tachyarrhythmia where the heart rate or the ventricle rate is more than 100. That means RR interval will be less than 15 or uh, there can be atrial rate more than 100 per minute. For that PP interval width should be less than 15 mm. Now, on the basis of this, let's see this uh, simple flow chart. Uh, so, if uh, you look at this simple flow chart, the first step in diagnosing uh, case of bradyarrhythmia or maybe tachyarrhythmia is QRS complex. Uh, suppose, for example, we are dealing a case of bradyarrhythmia where the heart rate is less than uh, 60. So, the first step will be look at the QRS complex. Uh, if the QRS complex is wide, means more than equal to 3 mm is the width, uh, it is a case of third degree AV block. Though the essential criteria to diagnose third degree AV block is no relation between QRS and P wave. But as a medical student, it is very tough to know ki there is no relation between P and QRS complex. So this is a very simple step. Wide QRS is always a case of third degree AV block. Other way around, if the QRS complex has normal width, then uh, we will uh, look at the P wave. If P wave is absent, that means it is a case of a sinus arrest in which AV node has become the pacemaker of the heart and AV node is depolarizing atria and ventricle simultaneously. So that rhythm will be known as junctional rhythm. So in that case, uh, ventricle depolarization will hide uh, atrial depolarization. So QRS will hide the P waves. While if P wave is uh, present, so then the third step will be uh, we will assess each P followed by QRS or not. If our answer is yes, each P followed by QRS, it could be sinus bradycardia or first degree AV block. In first degree AV block, ER interval will be increased. Increase means it will be more than 5 mm in width. If uh, each P is not followed by a QRS complex, it will be a case of second degree AV block in which if PR interval is progressively increasing, that means it is variable. Uh, it is a, a Mobis type 1 second degree block and if PR interval is fixed, then it is a Mobis type 2 block. So uh, based on this uh, simple flow chart, we can now diagnose these Brady arrhythmias one by one. So let's start with the first ECG. So in this ECG, uh, as we have seen, uh, step number one will be look at the QRS complex, whether the QRS width is normal or not. So here the QRS uh, complex width is uh, 2 or 2.5 mm. That means it is a normal width of QRS. Second step, then we will look at the P wave. Are P wave present in this ECG? So before the QRS uh, P wave is present, this is the P wave. You can see the arrow. Uh, so the third step and the final step will be assess is each P followed by QRS each P followed by QRS here the answer is yes and PR interval here is normal it is less than 5 mm so if we look at this flow chart QRS complex has normal width P wave is present and each P is followed by QRS yes so it could be sinus bradycardia or first degree AV block here the PR interval is normal so our answer is sinus bradycardia. So that is our correct answer. Now the next case uh, in this uh, we will follow the uh, same flow chart uh, that is first we'll assess the QRS complex. So you can see the QRS width here is uh, 2 mm that is a normal QRS width. Uh, then we'll try to identify is P wave present. So you can look these are the QRS complex. And in between two QRS complex, there is only one wave and that wave is coming after the QRS complex. So this wave is a T wave. This is a T wave which is present here. So P wave is missing just before the QRS. You can see there is a flat line. There is a flat line. There is a flat line. 
so there is uh, no p wave which is present here so p wave is absent so it is a diagnosis of uh, sinus arrest that means it is junctional arrhythm now moving on to the uh, third uh, ecg in this ecg uh, we will apply the same flow chart we will assess the qrs complex this is the qrs complex which is uh, normal in breath normal qrs then we will look at the p wave so just before the qrs p wave is present so you can see the pointer this is a p wave this is a p wave so p wave is present now we will assess is each p followed by qrs so the first p is followed by qrs first p followed by qrs p followed by qrs so that means our answer is yes so there will be two uh, diagnoses two differential diagnoses one is a sinus bradycardia or first degree av block so uh, first degree av block pr interval will be increased that means it will be more than 5 mm or more than one big square width so you can see here this is a pr interval this is the pr interval and it is more than one big square width so it is a case of uh, first degree av block uh, next ecg uh, in this ecg applying the same flow chart qrs complex let's see the qrs complex width is normal 2 millimeters uh, normal qrs identify the p wave this is a p wave this is a p wave this is a p wave p wave and practically for medical students if you are not able to identify which is a p or t wave so uh, make it uh, easy t is taller than p in most of the cases so you can see this is a t wave this is taller than the next p wave so p waves are present here so uh, we go uh, to this step now the third step is uh, assess each p followed by qrs so uh, this first p followed by qrs second p is followed by qrs third p is followed by qrs while the fourth p wave is not followed by qrs complex so the answer is no so this is a case of second degree av block now out of mobis 1 and mobis 2 let's see pr interval uh, whether it is fixed or variable so the first pr interval here is uh, of uh, maybe 5 or 6 mm the next one is 7 mm and the third one is 10 mm so it is variable pr interval uh, so it is a case of mobis type 1 block uh, next ecg uh, in this ecg uh, will follow the same flow chart qrs complex so qrs complex here is normal breath it is less than 3 mm normal identify the p wave so this is a p wave this is a p wave this is a p wave so uh, these are the p waves so p waves are present here assess is each p followed by qrs the first p wave is followed by qrs while the second p is not followed by qrs automatically it will become second degree av block now whether it is mobis 1 or 2 look at the pr interval so here the pr interval is fairly constant so you can see this all pr intervals they are same they are approximately uh, 4 or 5 millimeter and also know in uh, second degree mobis type 2 PR interval is same throughout the cardiac cycle. It can be a normal width or it can be prolonged. So uh, this is a second degree block Mobis type 2. Uh, while uh, the next one in this uh, we will use the flow chart QRS complex. So look at the QRS complex. Uh, starting point is here and uh, end point we can consider it here. Uh, this is most likely a inverted T wave. So this QRS complex, the width is approximately 4 or 5 mm. So QRS complex is wide. So it is third degree AV block. Uh, while the essential criteria was there was no relation between uh, QRS and P wave. P wave is coming differently. P wave is coming differently. And QRS is independent of the P wave. PP interval is constant. PP interval is constant. And RR interval is also constant. And some of the times P wave can be hidden with a T wave or can be hidden with a QRS complex in third degree AV block. So these are the cases of Brady arrhythmia diagnosis. Now moving on to the tachyarrhythmia diagnosis, we'll use the same three steps. First step will be QRS complex assessment. If QRS is wide, it is a case of a ventricle tachyarrhythmia. There can be some exceptions also. QRS is normal then it is most likely uh, supraventricular uh, tachyarrhythmia. 
दो द एक्सेप्शन इज समाइम्स सुपरा वेंट्रिकुलर टेकी कार्डिया विद एब्रेंट वेंट्रिकल कंडक्शन कैन कॉज अ वाइड क्यू आर एस कॉम्प्लेक्स बट दैट इज एक्सेप्शन सो इफ क्यू आर एस इज नॉर्मल द ओरिजन इज सुपरा वेंट्रिकुलर ओरिजन अब ऑफ द बंडल ऑफ द हेस देन वी विल लुक एट द पी वेव इफ पी वेव इज एबसेंट देर विल बी टू मेन पॉसिबिलिटी एबसेंट थ्रू आउट द ई सी जी इट कैन बी पी एस वी टी और इट कैन बी एट्रियल फिब्रिलेशन so psvt will have regular rate and atrial fibrillation will have irregular rate while p wave if they are present then we will assess is each p followed by qrs if our, our answer is yes then it is sinus tachycardia or atrial tachycardia and sometimes it is very tough to differentiate these two conditions though in atrial tachycardia you might get uh, abnormal p waves in lead 2 while if each p is not followed by qrs it is atrial flutter and we will see a typical sort of p wave pattern in atrial flutter so let's do some of the examples so now uh, this is the first example uh, here you can see rr interval is less than 15 mm so this is a case of tachy arrhythmia uh, we will use the same step first look at the qrs complex so the qrs complex here is 2 mm that is normal Uh, then we will look at the p wave so p waves are present look at the pointer these are the p waves which are present so p wave is present then we will assess is each p followed by qrs p followed by qrs answer is yes so it could be a sinus tachycardia or atrial tachycardia assuming this to be a lead 2 in lead 2 p wave is positive and it is same throughout the ecg so the diagnosis is sinus tachycardia applying the same uh, uh, ecg uh, flow chart here so qrs complex you can see this is qrs complex so this is normal p wave yes p wave is present before the qrs these are the p waves you can see very well here and is each p followed by qrs this p followed by qrs this p followed by qrs p followed by qrs and are the p are these p wave normal no this is a, a negative p wave this is abnormal next p wave is positive then slightly tall p wave so these p waves are changing their morphologies so this is most likely atrial tachycardia uh, next ecg in this ecg uh, first step will be qrs complex so this is a qrs complex normal in width normal in width qrs complex then look at the p waves so these are the p waves which are present and is each p followed by qrs no each p is not followed by qrs here because atrial rate is very fast all the atrial impulse will not go to the ventricle so there is a fixed av block which is happening here and this pattern is a saw tooth p wave appearance saw tooth you must have seen that saw tooth uh, which is used to cut the woods uh, this is typical of atrial fibrillation so sort of p wave pattern so our answer atrial flutter in the next ecg uh, we will apply the same flow chart qrs complex you can see qrs complex is less than 3 mm less than 3 mm normal then p waves so between two qrs complexes we will find a definitive only one wave is present so this wave is a t wave while no definitive p wave is present so p wave is absent here uh, then we will look at what is the rate so rr interval here rr interval here they are varying so it is irregular heart rate so irregular heart rate means atrial fibrillation though you might see some fluctuations of the waistline these are known as the small f means fibrillatory waves but it is not a mandatory criteria to diagnose the atrial uh, fibrillation so this is a case of atrial fibrillation in the next ecg uh, the same step we will use uh, qrs complex uh, so this is qrs complex uh, normal in width normal then we'll try to look at the p wave so between two qrs complex uh, usually there should be two waves one will be t and other will be p so only one wave is present here and this wave is of same morphology throughout so consider this as a t wave so p is absent here absent so it could be psvt or atrial fibrillation so rr interval is fairly regular here it is fairly regular so it is a regular rhythm so answer is uh, psvt uh, diagnosis 
Uh, next one, in this ECG, the first step will be QRS. So you can see these are the QRS complexes here. They are inverted QRS complexes and the width of the QRS is 4 mm here. Uh, that means it is a wide QRS, it is ventricle tach uh, tachyarrhythmia. So if the heart rate is uh, say around 100 to 250 or 100 to 200, some book says 200, some book says up till 250 is ventricle tachycardia. So here the RR interval is 10, so heart rate is 150 in this case. So wide QRS with heart rate of uh, 150 uh, goes in favor of ventricle tachycardia. But sometimes in cases of PSVT, there can be uh, aberrant ventricle conduction, supraventricular tachycardia. So this can be the typical ECG seen there. But always consider wide QRS complex tachycardia as ventricle origin unless proved otherwise. So this is ventricle tachycardia. Next ECG, here uh, you can see these are the QRS complexes. These are the QRS complexes. They are wide QRS complex, almost 5 mm. Uh, so this is ventricle origin and if you look at the rate, the uh, RR interval is 5 mm, so ventricle rate will come out to be 300 which is in a range of ventricle flutter. In this ECG, uh, you can see the QRS complex morphologies are changing. It is showing increasing trend then decreasing trend. So it is a wide complex uh, ventricle uh, tachyarrhythmia and this morphology is polymorphic ventricle tachycardia known as torsades d pointis. Uh, in this ECG, we are not able to identify any uh, definitive QRS complex. So when there is no definitive QRS complex, this will be ventricle tachyarrhythmia. And with this simple flow charts, uh, if you practice and revise these flow charts, you will be able to make the diagnosis in 10 seconds. Thank you.